Today I'm going to be painting not one, not two, but all 30 of the crossbow men from the Assassin's Creed board game in one day. Will I be able to do it? Let's find out. The crossbowmen are the basic guard unit of the Assassin's Creed board game and while it may seem excessive for the game to have provided 30 of these models, you're gonna need them when the alert state goes to red and the board starts to get covered in guards. In my previous video, I was able to paint the 10 agile models in just under 3 hours. So extrapolating from that, I should be able to complete 30 models in 9 hours, right? Well, it's not quite as simple as that because the crossbowmen are an unexpectedly detailed model and quite unlike the plain agile. I mean, oh, damn yeah. man, this guy got drip. But ultimately, they are a basic unit used in every memory in the game, so I want to get them done quickly. The first thing we're going to do is to prepare the models for priming. I've mentioned before in my first video how mounting models on these sticks using double-sided tape can make it easier to prime your models. As we will be using a spray can primer, I can use this method to easily twist and manipulate the angle of the models, making it easier to spray the primer into all the gaps and recesses. Once the black is done, I will do a quick and dirty zenithal highlight using Wraith Bone. All that is needed is just a few blasts from a high angle to give the model some quick pre-shading. Here you can see the results of the zenithal highlight which I think really helps to bring out the details on the model. After priming, we're going to start by painting all the red portions on the model. I use Blood Angels Red as it is a really nice vibrant red and I paint the sleeves, the chest, half of the skirt both in the front and the back, not forgetting the back of the tunic as well as the leggings. The beret will also be painted in red. The key to efficient batch painting is to break down the painting process into a number of steps so that you can paint more efficiently. One way to do this is to separate the steps by colour, but how do you know which colour to choose? Well, as a rule of thumb, you want to start painting from the innermost portions of the model and work outward. This is because it's easier to paint details on the outside, which reduces the chances of accidentally hitting already painted interior details. This is especially important for models with a closed pose like this one where it's difficult to paint the interior details. So we keep painting the rest of the models and we are soon done with the first step which has taken us just about 1 hour and 40 minutes. For the next colour, we are going to be painting all the brown leather portions with Steel Legion Dread. The reason we are going with brown next is because it is the colour of the next most inner detail of the model, that is, the vest area. The benefit in doing this is especially apparent for the alternate sculpt and you can see how easy it would be to make mistakes if you reach in with a loaded brush with all the other colours on. So with the light brown, we are going to paint the gloves, the vest, the neck guard, the boots, as well as the straps behind the knee guard. The browns may look a little bit light right now but don't worry too much as we will be shading it later on. So I go on to paint in all the brown portions for the rest of the models and the total time for this step is about 1 and a half hours. So it's just about time for lunch and while my food is heating up, I quickly paint in the faces with Cadian Flesh Tone. I squeeze in this step so that I can tick off one more colour off the list before lunch. Okay, lunch is ready and it's time for a break. It's important to take frequent breaks so that you can avoid mistakes. After a good lunch, I move on to what's probably the most difficult step. The reds and browns have provided a nice base of colour but I really wanted to recreate the dapper black and red striped colour scheme in the art. So I used Abaddon Black and I start painting in the other half of the skirt. However, when I tried to paint the stripes on the sleeves, I realised that my brush was just too thick for this delicate work. So I decided to split this step into two halves and focus on painting through all the rest of the skirts first. It's important to find a good flow so that you can keep the momentum going and keep yourselves motivated. Once the skirt is done, I switch to a thinner brush and start painting the stripe patterns. While the scalp is pretty detailed, it's not perfect and it's sometimes hard to pick out the exact detail to paint. What I'm trying to do is pick out the raised edges in black, but sometimes that can be a little hard to identify, especially in the leggings area, so I sometimes just paint an approximate black line instead. 
Last but not least, I also paint in black lines into the model's beret. As I paint in the blacks, I am also at the same time covering up any overpaint that may have occurred from the earlier steps. This is why when batch painting, you should try and plan to paint darker colours after lighter colours. This is probably the toughest part of painting this model but I finish it in about 1 hour and 10 minutes. Now that the main colours are done, the models are really starting to take shape. For the next step, we'll be painting all the metal details and for this we'll be using plate mill metal. So with plate mill metal, we'll be painting in the knee guards, the hip armour as well as the shoulder guards. Thanks to our prior planning, this step goes by really quickly as all these details are on the outside and therefore really easy to paint. But even simple steps will take some time when there are 30 models so we finish this step in about 1 hour. The remaining details are also going to be painted brown but to give them a little bit of separation from the earlier letters, I'm going to be using Rhinox Hide. With Rhinox Hide, I paint the crossbow as well as the quiver and the belt on the model. So after I'm done painting all the browns, all that's left to do is to pick out the little boat with a little bit of metal. With all the base colours blocked in, we are just about ready for washers. I plan to do my washers all at the same time, so I paint in all the bases with Ushapti Bone in preparation. To minimise drying time, I start by shading all the flesh portions with Reichland Flesh Shade. While that is drying, I move on to the next step which is to use Agrax Earth Shade to shade all the leather, wood and metal portions on the miniature. I don't really want to shade the red areas because I want the model to retain some of that vibrancy. But to maintain a good flow, I don't mind if the wash spills over into some of the red areas, especially around the tunic. Once that's done, I move on to shading the bases and for this I'm using our usual soft tone and green tone combination. As this method requires a little bit of wet blending, I do it 5 at a time so that I can subtly blend in the colour variations. While the washers are drying, we are going to put in the finishing touch which would be to paint in the chest insignia. To do that, we start with Vallejo Off-White and paint over the entire insignia. I like using Vallejo Off-White because it has a lot of pigments and makes it easier to get away with painting a single layer of white. Once the white is dry, I paint in the lion with a Blood Angels Red, trying very hard not to let the colour bleed out onto the white feel. This can be a little bit challenging with the alternate sculpt but you know, just, just try your best. Lastly, we carefully paint in the little black bar underneath the lion. Try not to water down your paint too much or it will bleed out onto the white background. Okay, by now the washers are dry so we're going to dry brush the bases with Ushap T Bone and pick out all that detail and finish up the models by painting the bezels black. And with that, we finished painting all 30 of the Crossbowman models and it only took us just about 10 hours? But you don't have to do what I did and you can always break down the job into a few weeknight painting sessions. But I was glad to finish painting these models so I can finally stop using these proxies. They aren't perfect but done is always better than done. Let me know if you finish painting your crossbow man and if you have, you can check out my other videos on the Assassin's Creed board game.